The Devonian period is the third and middle period of the Paleozoic era. The Devonian itself picks up 419.2 million years ago, and in this video I'll be focusing on laying out much of the life of this period. The world changed a lot during the Devonian. In the fish and fungal worlds, and the life both already on and moving on to land became a little more recognizable to the born into the modern world sapien organisms, me and you. Reefs rolled along with their characteristic Paleozoic players, and trilobites and eurypterids would have preferred this period never happened. In fact, many creatures would have preferred this period never happened. Great death went down in the extinctions at the end of the Devonian. First, we'll consider the fish. And to start off, we'll consider the jawless fish. The jawless fish flourish in the Devonian. In great contrast to today, when jawless fish exist in the form of hagfish and lampreys, which together comprise around the mere 50 species. Jawless fish from the Devonian include the genera of Hemicliaspis and Teraspis. Another jawless fish type remaining in the Devonian are the eel-like bearers of the famed conodont fossils. They radiated in the late Devonian with over a thousand taxa thus far named for them in upper Devonian rocks, and they were hit hard in the extinction. The armored versions of jawless fishes, which were in fact most of them, entirely died out at the end of the Devonian. Onto the jawed fish, which uh, appeared in the fossil record of the Silurian, they too flourished during the Devonian. The armored placoderms dominated the predatory fish scene of the early and middle Devonian and in the late Devonian of North America in the form of the largest monster yet seen and the most famous placoderm of all, the reaching up to 10 meter long Dunkleosteus. The late Devonian extinctions saw the demise of all placoderms. Beyond the placoderms, amongst the Devonian jawed fish were the Acanthodians. Also first definitively appearing in the fossil record of the Silurian, these were mostly small fish ranging between 50 and 200 millimeters. And from the Acanthodians, it's thought that the first cartilaginous fish arose, the chondrichthys, and from among these fish emerged the first shark-like fish in the early Devonian, though these were not modern sharks, which wouldn't show up until much later. Last to consider amongst the fish are the bony fish, or osteichthians. While there is fragmentary evidence of their existence earlier in the Silurian, the first known articulated osteichthian comes to us in the tail end of the Silurian in the form of Gueo Oniris. The early Devonian then saw the diversification into the two groups of bony fish, the rayfin fish or actinopterygians and the lobefin fish or sarcopterygians. Nowadays, almost all osteichthians are of the rayfin variety, with the lobe-finned exceptions of the coelacanth and three species of lungfish. The Devonian, in contrast, saw the dominance of lobe-finned fish, such as the lungfish Dipteris from the Middle Devonian of Europe and North America, and the lobe-finned fish Ostilolepis. The rayfin fish were much rarer in the Devonian, such as the active predator Chirolepis. Now considering the oft-neglected, unfortunately including in this presentation, fungi. By the Devonian, some fungi were decomposing decaying plant material, and some were parasitically invading living plants. The rhiny shirt of the early Devonian is a lagerstatten of great significance more generally, and in it you could find mats of fungal hyphae, some of which are the oldest fungi to appear in symbiotic relationships land plants. As we saw in the last video, Coxonia had arisen in the Silurian along with some other plants. But while the Silurian examples are only a couple of millimeters long, Devonian Coxonia reached as high as 65 millimeters and had thicker vascular tissue. Some other Rhineopsida reached as high as 180 millimeters. The early Devonian saw the emergence of other vascular land plant groups, and roots, stems, and leaves were taken up later in the Devonian, with some basal tracheophytes reaching as high as 3 meters. Arising around the same time as the rhineophytes were the lycophytes, the oldest of which date to the late Silurian. Low, non-woody stemmed lycopsids existed in the Devonian, but some would soon grow larger to be notable players of the coming Carboniferous period. The monolophyta, a clade consisting of horsetails and ferns, first saw horsetails emerge in the Devonian, and not undisputed fern-like plants are known from the Devonian as well. The late Devonian sees the first plants with seeds, which will grow more significant in time, 
and by the late Devonian, some plant life had migrated inland, producing the first ever extensive forests. As for the animals on land, we enter this period with some arthropods as land animals. Myriapods, specifically centipedes, millipedes, and arthropleuridia, arachnids, like scorpions entering the Devonian, mites for showing up in the fossil record in the Rhiney shirt, and spider-like arachnids as well, and hexapods, such as the springtail Rhineella. The hexapods of the Devonian would arguably see the appearance of the first true insect, though Devonian Rhineonatha hirsti is still debated about as to whether it's a true insect, and some negate that categorization and fancy it a myriapod. In the following period, undisputed insects enter the fossil record. Now to some animals in the water that were getting a little more comfortable with land. Remember those lobefin fishes we met earlier in the video? Well, in the Devonian, the stem tetrapods emerge amongst the tetrapodomorph lobefin fish or Sarcopterygii. Tetrapodomorph lobefins like Osteolepis and Eustinopteron share many limb and skull characteristics with the stem tetrapods of the late Devonian. As for those stem tetrapods themselves, an interesting thing that stands out in these early forms is that five fingers and toes did not start off as the tetrapod norm. Acanthostega, the most fish-like of these earliest known stem tetrapods, had eight toes. Better adapted to land is seven-toed Ichthyostega, with a relatively strong supportive ribcage and feet, but even Ichthyostega is a creature living overwhelmingly in water and too weak to properly walk, and some suggest it may have lugged itself about much like an elephant seal, pulling and propelling itself. Stronger limbed still was Tulerpaton, a less complete fossil early aquatic stem tetrapod, who checked in with six fingers. Tulerpaton is also thought to have spent most of its time living in water, though it couldn't breathe there because it had no gills and depended on the open air. It would take until the following Carboniferous period for us to see fully walking capable tetrapods as well as the split into the two tetrapod groups, the Batrachomorpha and Reptiliomorpha. As for the reefs, as earlier, tabulate and rugose corals are still the two types of corals around, and also as earlier, joining them in reef construction are the stromatoporoid sponges. This is a sweet and sour time for the stromatoporoids, who reach their historical apex in the mid-Devonian, but are almost entirely, and possibly entirely, culled from the scene in an extinction at the end of the Devonian, with some later similar sponges possibly or possibly not from them. Meanwhile, among the corals, some tabulates characteristic of the Devonian were Olipora and Pleurodictium, and the tabulate-like, although perhaps a related group, Heliolites. Ragosan corals had their players as well, such as Calceola and Philips Astria. Tabulate and Rugos corals were hit hard in the extinction as well, though they survived through it to live another couple of periods. The crinoids are around and are strangely mostly unaffected by the extinctions. The brachiopods are around as well, and very common, dominating the filter-feeding benthic niche, and they saw the atropida and pentamerida killed off in the Devonian extinctions, which also hit the orthida and strophomenida hard and left spiriferida and rhinconelida surviving in deeper water. The trilobites of the Devonian were already diminished from their former heyday, but still around. The trilobites don't remember the Devonian fondly, however, as almost all their orders were extinguished in the late Devonian. One order remained for the coming two periods, however, that of Proetida. Eurypterids, meanwhile, went through some trouble as well in the Devonian. It doesn't start all bad, with the largest ever arthropod, the Eurypterid Jackalopterus, estimated to be around 8 feet tall, without counting the claw extended out in front. From the early Devonian, however, Eurypterids are dying out. And while already rear in the late Devonian, they're struck further with the loss of nine families, with three families surviving at the end of it all, existing into the coming period. The Adelophthalmidae, Hibertopteridae, and Mycteroptidae. The Nautiloids were still kicking and would be for a long time, remaining as they are alongside us today. Though they began to decline in the Devonian, perhaps in part thanks to competition by the newly entered into the cephalopod club of the early Devonian, the coiled shell ammonoids, which get hit hard but make it through the extinction. 
having taken a look at life in the Devonian, we've got two more periods in the Paleozoic left, and my next step is exploring life in the following period, the Carboniferous, which donated bunches of coal to us.